All right, what's going on, you beautiful boys and girls? Welcome back to another episode of Pack the Brew. Appreciate you guys joining us. If you're new here, I'm Ryan. That's Gage. We talk about baseball predictions, hot takes, baseball culture, whatever it may be. Sometimes we're going to get some guys on to, to interviews. So if you guys like all that, if you guys love baseball as much as us, uh, stick around and uh, continue following Pack the Brew. But right now, yeah. we've been previewing the National League Central all week. We previewed the National League West Last week, we'll get to all our divisions as time goes by before the season starts. But today is about the Cincinnati Reds, one of the most exciting teams in baseball with one of the most electric players in baseball. Can they take the step up in 2024 and make the postseason, or are they still a little bit short and need a little, little bit more time? Gage, how are you feeling about the Reds this year, buddy? Uh, I guess I guess we'll get to that. Uh, my starting rotation starts with Hunter Green. This dude earned so much more than he got last year. Had a hundred and thirty point difference between his expected OPS and his actual OPS, which is just an unbelievable stat. Uh, was ranked t- like in the bottom twenty percent for allowed OPS and was in the top twenty percent of pitchers for expected OPS. So just had some pretty bad luck. Excited for what Hunter Green has in store this year. I'm so excited to see what Hunter, Hunter Green can do. Uh, he did struggle a little bit in the second half, but as you mentioned, a little bit of bad luck for him also. He really just need to, needs to improve this year. If it's good luck, bad luck, doesn't matter. The numbers need to show improvement this year because second overall pick in 2017, some injuries have slowed him down, uh, but the hype has always been there. It's still there. You really want to see him take that step up because he's one of the most electric pitchers in the game. He's just a fun guy to watch. I really hope he's able to do that this year. Yeah, for sure. My two is Andrew Abbott. Abbott was also the first pitcher since 1900 to record at least 40 strikeouts while allowing five or fewer fewer runs over his first six starts. So a very, very interesting stat with that dude. Another guy that I'm pretty excited for for this Reds team. He did struggle a little bit also in August and September, but you want to talk about an unsung hero of this Reds team last year. Andrew Abbott's the guy. He was just fantastic, other than a little bit of that uh, stretch in that second half. But overall, uh, another guy that you you look at all the rookies in the lineup last year, I feel like Abbott just didn't get that love he deserved. Yeah, that I mean, totally. Yeah. Uh, Montes, Frankie Montes, wants to pitch the entire season. Just wants to make all of his starts was the headliner of things that I was able to find for Frankie Matas. Um, obviously, dude's a vet. Excited to see what he has in store. Yeah, for Fra- Frankie Montez, it's all about being healthy for him. If he is what he was in his last two years with Oakland before being traded to the Yankees, then the Reds have a very good starting rotation. It's all about if he can stay healthy, though. Right, exactly. Another guy that, we ta- that we're talking about, especially with being healthy, would be Nick Lodolo. Um, in 2022, had a 1.9 WAR with a 3.90 FIP and a 3.66 ERA, and then in seven games, like had a 6.29 ERA and then got injured. So, um, for him, it's totally about you know staying healthy, and even in you know articles, that's exactly what he's talked about. He just wants to be healthy, um, whether that is moving out to the bullpen or staying in the starting rotation. He just wants to be healthy. But I just want him at four. That's that's my that's my hope for him. Absolutely. My number four is going to be Nick Martinez, uh, second free agent starting pitcher they signed. The Reds, they need a little bit of work, work in that rotation. I like what they did in this offseason. They didn't go and get one of the big boys, and I didn't feel like they needed to. They got guys that didn't kill them financially, and they didn't go and make like a big trade that you know really tuck away from their fantastic farm system. Nick Martinez, another guy that was very reliable last year uh, for the Padres last two years, so I really love the addition of Martinez. Yeah, and then at five, I have Ashcraft. Uh, he has been working big time on pitches. He's been, quote-unquote, flirting around with the changeup and just wants to see how that really works out for him before you know he gets into it. Already a nasty, nasty repertoire for the kid. Uh, excited to see what he's got. I am excited to see what Ashcraft can do, but I actually don't have him in my starting five. Maybe the Reds want to go with the six-man rotation. Not sure. Uh, but my number five is actually, actually me, Nick Lodolo. Uh, he's, he just want him, as you mentioned before, you just want him back healthy. And if he can be healthy, I think he can be one of the best guys in this rotation. Absolutely. What does your bullpen look like? Bullpen for the Reds. 
you know, we've said it for a lot of these scenes, but the National League Central's bullpen are really, really good, and it's yeah. no difference with the Reds. Their closer, Alexis Diaz, brother of Edwin, and he showed he was much more than just the, quote, brother of Edwin. He's Edwin, a very right. good lockdown closer, and I could see an all-star appearance for him. Yeah, me too. And that that's a brutal one, man. To be that, like, gross, like, to be one of the best closers and to be, you know, you just happen to be the brother of one of the best. It's it's a pretty tough look for him. Uh, it's a pretty tough thing to work out. Uh, for me, my setup one, then, is Pagan. Uh, he agreed to a two-year deal, or two-year $60 million deal with the Reds this year. Uh, posted 29 Two ninety nine, so a three ERA and a point ninety five WHIP with sixty five strikeouts with the Twins. Um, return he, wow, uh, he has had a three seventy one ERA with four fifty six and a one hundred seven WHIP and four hundred MLB innings. So looking for him to continue that success in Cincinnati. And Pagan's another really good ad this offseason. Like I said, I felt like the Reds had a really good offseason. Uh, free agent for Minnesota, great season last year. Just a really nice ad to pair with Diaz in the bullpen. And then your second setup guy? My second setup guy I feel like is kind of open, but I went with Lucas Sims. He was a former first-rounder who really found something last year uh, in that Reds bullpen. Yeah, uh, mine is going to be Brent Suter. You mentioned it's wide open, but I'm going to give it the nod to Suter. Brought home a natives of Cincinnati. He's very excited to be there. It was very, has always been just a very solid, trustworthy guy throughout his career, especially in Milwaukee. Did the exact same thing that he did in Milwaukee and Colorado. Um, very good dude, even better baseball player. And as Brewer fans, we will always love the Raptor, and I hope he really succeeds in Cincinnati. Uh, but let's move over to the lineup. At catcher behind the plate, I have Tyler Stevenson. He did struggle last year. If you can get him back to 2021 form, then it's just another really deadly bat in this red lineup. Yeah, and there's there's plenty of them, man. I mean, when you're looking through this lineup, you can you can name them off as much as you want, even if it's, it's Steer, it's McLean, it's De La Cruz. It, I mean... You you really can take your pick, but man, you 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 mentioned it. Twenty twenty one Tyler Stevenson, a unbelievable form for him. Hoping, really, really hoping that he returns to that. And who do you have at first base? My first baseman is going to be Christian Encarnacion Strand. He is also going to be my rookie of the year. Have pretty high expectations for him. Definitely a fair pick. I'm going to go with another free agent addition for him, uh, Condelario. He was their lone free agent bat, and it was a big one. And obviously Joey Votto is an, a, a fantastic player, fantastic human. But last couple of years, he struggled. He hasn't been healthy. I feel like Condelario is a big upgrade from Votto of the last two years. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's crazy. I mean, he's he's made his... <laughs> Candelario's going on his NL Central tour, uh, all from Chicago <laughs> to Cincinnati. He's he's making his way through. My second baseman is going to be Matt McClain. I mentioned it. Uh, just a great bat. Project, projected for a three three WAR with a one hundred nine WRC plus, and a little. They they're saying a little bit of regression, but I think I disagree with Fangraphs here. I think you can see a lot of progression for Matt McClain this upcoming season. Yeah, I'm going to disagree with Fangraphs, too. I don't usually disagree with them. I'm going to disagree with them now. There, I, I love Matt McLean. He's my starting second baseman. If he had a full season last year, I don't think it's crazy to say he finished his second rookie of the year voting. Uh, yeah. No one was going to pass Corbin Carroll, but Matt McLean, what he did in that half season, just incredible. Yeah, and it, it, it wouldn't have been enough, but it definitely would have been good enough for second. Uh, at short, obviously, he's going to be Ellie De La Cruz. Uh, kids and animal. Absolutely electric player to watch. Struggled a little bit after all of the hype that he got, but he he re, he came back to a pretty pretty solid season uh, per the numbers at the end of the year. Uh, yes, Elliot La Cruz, pretty easy one at shortstop right there. Strikeouts have to worry you. It's a big part of his game, and you know he's going to strike out a lot. But if he can continue to be what he was in his first couple of weeks, the most electric man in baseball, stealing home, hitting for a cycle. I mean, what he did and what he brought for the Cincinnati Reds last year, it, it's it's incredible. But, I mean, the numbers don't lie. He did struggle after those first couple of weeks. You can't let that happen again. If he can just kind of find the middle ground there, you know you're not going to get those first two weeks. But he cannot be what he was after that because he was almost unplayable after that. I think unplayable is definitely the word. I think you nailed it. 
Uh, my third baseman that is going to be Novelli, Noel V. Marte. Uh, 120 WRC plus in 35 games last year for Cincinnati. Obviously a very, I mean, not, not, a, not a great sample slice, but that .7 war, um, you know, that's, it's, it's pretty good numbers for, uh, uh, 35 games. Yeah. And those 35 games, you already, I mean, you already knocked it down. He, he really impressed a lot and he came over from uh, Seattle in that loose Castile trade. I felt like this was a really good one, one trade at the time. And it's showing that even more now. Yes, absolutely. Uh, my left fielder then is going to be Spencer Steer. I'm very, very high on Spencer Steer going into the 24 season. Um, he has been working out with the team big time per, you know, a bunch of fan graph, MLB.com reports. Um, has, has been in the lab, as, as I'm saying. Uh, but last year was his first, like, full year, full major league experience. 118 WRC+, 271 average with a 2.1 war. He's, pro- he's projected to go up. Um, but man, I, I totally think that the numbers that he's projected to go up by are not enough. I'm totally thinking that he leads his team, um, big time and that he's going to be the best player on this team by a landslide. There's a lot of young guys on this Reds team that I'm a big fan of. You know, obviously we already knocked down a few of them. Uh, but I think Spencer Steer is my favorite. He came over in the Tyler Maley trade and Maley was good for the twins, but I feel like the Reds definitely won this trade. Spencer Steer, I think, is going to have a monster year for the Reds. Yeah, for sure. Uh, my center fielder then is going to be TJ Friel. Uh, 4.4 war last year, so big big time contributions for him. Totally could do it again with the Reds this season. Same for me, Friedel in center field. Kind of a big surprise season last year. He got an MVP vote. Not something you were really expecting of from him last year. Yeah, that that's 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 an inter- that's awesome. The you know the random guys that get MVP votes, man, it's it's awesome. Uh, Ryan, what are you looking at for your right fielder? Right field is gonna be Will Benson, another you know Cleveland guy that started out over with the Guardians slash Indians, and I don't want to say they gave gave up on him too soon, but I mean that's another one that's kind of looking like it's gonna bite Cleveland in the in the butt um, because he had a 128 WRC plus last year, and already he is bat flipping and he is already bringing the electricity uh, in sprint training for the Reds. So a guy oh, I'm a big fan of. A very clean, a very clean one too. Like, dude had mm. definitely practiced that one before he did it. Definitely thought that one out uh, for sure. My DH then, my right fielder is also Will Benson, and then my DH is going to be Jindia. Loved that they gave him a second chance. Uh, very excited for what he has in store for this Reds team. So my DH is going to be Strand, um, also from that melee deal. Like I said, I think the Reds did fantastic in this trade. I would not count out 40 home runs. He's a big power bat, mm-hmm. especially in Great American Ballpark, one of the best hitters ballparks in all of baseball. Uh, very excited to see what he can do. India is is tough. They just extended him for two years, but you look at the positions he plays, the other guys are just better than him i still feel like a trade is going to be in the works you know sometime this year and i think he's he deserves play every day but there's just not a spot for him uh, but i wanted yeah. to ask you you don't have candelario in that starting lineup yeah uh i i really believe in incarnacion strand um i think candelario is definitely i think he's definitely a guy maybe 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 he'll platoon with incarnacion strand but i think that that's that'll be the reason why it's just how high I am on Encarnacion Strand. Okay, that's fair. Who's uh, who's your MVP for this team? My MVP is going to be Spencer Steer. Oh, I mentioned it. Definitely didn't give him enough love. Uh, definitely a guy that can totally, totally do it for the Reds. Um, I know that Ellie De La Cruz is a very, very easy pick there, but just trying to be a little bit different. Yeah, I, and I'm, I'm going to follow you there. I mean, I already, I already talked about how he's my favorite my favorite young guy in this team, Spencer Steer, 30 homers, 900 OPS are, are just some of my predictions for him. I think he can have a absolute monster year for the Reds. A hundred percent. My Cy Young is going to be the Reds ace Hunter green. Uh, you know, it's, it's the ace. And although he's been unlucky, I think he continue. I think he'll continue that type of success. Hunter green. Same for me. This is the year he steps up. The numbers just haven't been living up to the hype. This is the year the numbers do. 
Yep, my rookie of the year is going to be Encarnacion Strand. I mentioned it very, very high on him. I like Strand a lot, but my rookie of the year is going to be Noel Vi Marte. Uh, most of the most of the guys uh, graduated last year, so they had a heck of a race last year for rookie of the year on this Reds team. Uh, but for for right now, it's mostly between Strand and Marte. Yep, for sure. My breakout is going to be Ellie De La Cruz. He's very, very good. He's just totally electric. He finished with an 84 WRC plus last year, which was 16 points below league average. So just kind of rooting for him to kind of get up to that league average as, as far as that number goes. Fair pick. I feel like that's the, definitely the popular pick here. I'm actually going with Matt McClain, though. He had 3.2 F4 in 89 games. Doing that over a full season is very impressive, but over 89 games, uh, I mean, to see what he can do over his first full season, I, I think you could see a 5 F4, and that would be incredible at second base for him. Who's your bounce back player going to be? My bounce back guy is going to be Frankie Montez. Uh, he only had nine games in the last season and a half. So it's just all about can he stay healthy if he can. I mean, I expect him to be a big part of this Reds rotation. I totally agree with you. Uh, you mentioned it. Just staying healthy is the name of the game in baseball, and that just happens to be the guy that's going to do it. Um, my favorite offseason move is going to be uh, – it's. Although it's kind of is it's kind of a dumb one. I love Brent Suter. I think that's my offseason move. He he's he's a native of native of Cincinnati, but I think there's obviously if I'm not picking the Brewers guy, it's Candelario. They needed a guy, they got a guy, and Candelario. And Suter, I mean, it's not just say hey, we, we like the guy. He had some nice funny moments for the Brewers. No, I mean this guy succeeded. In Coors Field, of all places. Yeah. If you can succeed in Coors, you can succeed anywhere. So I expect him to be a big part of this Reds bullpen. My favorite offseason move is the same as my bounce back, Frankie Montez. Uh, I, I felt like the Reds had a really great offseason, got some good buy low candidates, and they didn't do anything that's going to really hurt them for the future, but put some in position to win for 2024 and 2025. And then who is who is the most underrated player on this Reds lineup? <clears throat> so... I feel like there's a few guys you could definitely pick here, but it's giving my MVP, man. Spencer Steer. Uh, like I said, there's plenty you can choose, and I've already said it multiple times. Steer, Steer is my clear favorite on this team. Yeah, I'm going to go with Matt McClain. He got buried under Steer and De La Cruz last year, and with that type of, you know, with the game that he plays, he totally earns, you know, that underrated nod in my head. I like that a lot. Like, I mean, there's so many guys you can pick. I think McLean's a great pick. Uh, National League Central finish. Gage, I'm going to let you go first on this one, buddy. Uh, well, he set me up for failure here. But my NL Central finish for this team is going to be five. And before I get attacked for this, let me let me explain myself. I've said it in all of the episodes. It's boomer bust in the NL Central. And I think the margin for error is so, so minimal in the NL Central that they'll miss the – They'll miss it by like seven games. That's my guess. If it's more than seven games, it would blow my mind. But because of you know how I think they stack towards the end of the year, I I just I just have a feeling that it's going to end up that the Reds fall just all the way down. They could have a they could have a lead. They totally could. I would not be shocked if they finished in third. I cannot be. Fin I wouldn't be shocked if they finished in first. It's just how competitive this NL Central is, and they they're just hap they just happen to be in fifth. That's just my that's just my take. So before I get to mine, I got I gotta ask it. Eighty two and eighty last year for the Reds. Do you have them at a better record than last year? I do. I do. I think the I think the number to win the NL Central is going to be like ninety three. Okay. So you have every team above five hundred in yes. the National League Central. Okay. Yes, and I—I I mean, I think that's fair. Uh, I, I'm going to disagree with you. Um, where they finish by a good amount, but I mean, when it's that close and that much of a cluster, I mean, like I and we've said it for all teams so far, and we're going to continue to say it. It's just a cluster. Every team can win this division. Every team can finish in fifth. So, I'm—I don't have them in fifth. I actually have the Reds in second place. Um, I think they're just on the doorstep. They are so close 
to being a absolute juggernaut. But still a lot of young guys, you know, you hear it with other guys, the sophomore slump, can these guys avoid it? They have so many guys going in that sophomore season. If a lot of them can, then this team easily can win the Central. If some of them hit that, then, you know, you can maybe see them just not live up to the hype they're going to have this year. But regardless where they finish, the Cincinnati Reds are going to be so exciting to watch, so Mm -hmm. much electricity. It's hard not to really, you know, root for this team and to just watch them. doesn't matter if where they're playing, when they're playing. You want to put the Cincinnati Reds on your TV. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to another one. You can always find the links in the description of this episode. You can find us anywhere that you find podcasts. You can find us anywhere on social media. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for listening to another one, and we will see you in the next episode.